What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel. And we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today. And we're back on the Epic History TV's content for you. And we're doing Napoleonic Wars. And in this episode we have got Napoleon 1813, The Road to Lipsy. Lipsig. 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 I just went blank. My mind went blank. <laughs> Lipsy. Anyway. Over here we try our best. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are enjoying <laughs> Epic History TV's content, then please head over to his page. A link will be in the description box down below. If you're enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Hit that notification bell. But we're just going to jump into this episode. Let's do this. What a career Napoleon has ruined. Having gained so much glory, he could bestow peace on Europe, but he has not done so. The spell is broken. Emperor Alexander of Russia. Vilna, December 1812. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> 1812 had been a disastrous year for Napoleon. His invasion of Russia had led to the almost total destruction of an army of half a million men. Now Poland and Germany were wide open to Russian attack. Some advised Emperor Alexander that this was the time to make a favourable peace with Napoleon. Russia's own armies had been mauled and Western Russia devastated. But Alexander was determined to see Napoleon defeated for good to free Europe from his clutches and avenge Moscow's destruction by taking Paris. Napoleon's allies were deserting him. Prussian troops had already agreed a truce with the Russians. Schwarzenberg's corps marched back to Austria, which assumed a policy of watchful neutrality. Napoleon had left Marshal Murat in charge of the remnants of the army. Okay but he left for the Kingdom of Naples, hoping to cut a deal with the Allies that would let him keep his throne. Oh, wow. Oh. He was replaced by Napoleon's stepson, Eugène, mm. who'd proved himself a brave and yeah, able okay. soldier in Russia, but was unused to independent command, and now faced odds of four to one. Wow. Like it. Yeah, yeah, he just lived. As Russian forces advanced through Poland, he continued to retreat west, leaving garrisons to hold strategic fortresses, most of which were soon besieged. On the 7th of February, Russian troops entered Warsaw okay. unopposed. Napoleon's Polish client state, the Duchy of Warsaw, effectively ceased to oh, exist. Wow. Oh. Three weeks later, Russian troops entered Berlin while Sweden joined the Allies. Sweden was ruled by Napoleon's former Marshal Bernadotte, now officially known as Crown Prince Karl Johan. Many would accuse him of betraying Napoleon, but he'd always been clear that once he became Sweden's Crown Prince, he'd pursue Swedish interests, which is what he now claimed to do. Okay. Uh -huh. In exchange for Norway, to be taken from France's ally, Denmark, and one million pounds from Britain. Bernadotte agreed to join what was now the sixth coalition <laughs> against <laughs> France since the revolution. Wow. With an army yeah. of 30,000 wow. troops. 10 days later, King Frederick William of Prussia. We really did just throw money around, didn't we? We really did. <laughs> we were just like, look, here's a mill. Yeah, 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 just cause some problems. Just yeah. join the sixth one, yeah. and we'll, we'll do this now. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> declared war on France. If not, the video will help you out. Yeah. It followed weeks of indecision. The king was widely is... seen as a weak character and terrified of Napoleon. But with guarantees of Russian military support, the return of lost territory, and enormous financial and material aid from Britain, <laughs> he agreed to free the That's it, that's it. <laughs> Financial aid from Britain? Uh, yeah, let's go. On the 17th of March, he issued a proclamation to the people of Prussia and Germany, and Mein Volk, 
to my people, okay. summoning them to fight for Prussia and Germany's honour mm. in what would soon be known as the German War of Liberation. Oh, OK. The Prussian army had been greatly reformed since its humiliating defeat to Napoleon in 1806. Mm. A military commission headed by General Von... Uh, it might be being silly, so how long mm. has it been since... Because Prussia... Well, Prussia the ones that left 18, 1806 was when they got defeated. Wait, 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 who was the commander that left at the start? Was it Prussian? Remember at the very, very start, the, the, the uh, start of the invasion of Russia, there was two generals, one retreated, or one, one was to make their name in the battles and one wasn't, and one left early. Was the one that left early the Prussian one? Because if so, that would explain why they still have so many men. Because I'm just thinking if they That's were, a good point, you know. Yeah, because if they were in... If they were in... I don't think... Russia, then how much time has passed? Because, obviously, they would have took casualties. I don't I think... I might it. just be thinking of, off of a tangent completely. Yeah, I, I don't know, but that's... I think... Mm. I don't think it is. So how much time has it been since they've got back then? Uh, they were last defeated in 1806... So, yeah, so you've got seven years to reform your army. One year, Jack. The troops, 1812. Oh, no, when Persian got defeated, it was 1806. Oh, no, I'm talking about, like, how long has it been since they've left Russia? Because if they've got a formidable force, like... Oh, right, yeah, yeah, no, it's only been a year. Yeah, interesting. ...by General von Scharnhorst had sacked nearly 200 old generals and abolished flogging, expanded recruitment, and introduced exams for officers, mm. and overhauled training, tactics, and drill. When Napoleon met the new Prussian army in battle two months later, he remarked, these animals have learned something. Mm. Small consolation, they'd learned most of it from him. This video. Only a short time ago, I was the conqueror of the world, commanding the largest and finest army of modern times. That's all gone now. Napoleon to Count Mole. Chelsea's Palace, I'm guessing, February yeah. 1813. As his enemies massed in Germany, Napoleon was in Paris working tirelessly to build a new army with which to face them. 137,000 new conscripts joined the army, and laws passed to call up 100,000 more, while 40,000 veterans from the army in Spain, 16,000 marines, and 80,000 men of the National Guard, a home defense force, were transferred to Germany. Oh, wow. The new conscripts were nicknamed Marie-Louises, after Napoleon's young wife, who passed the new conscription laws in his absence. They were young and raw. Two-thirds were teenagers, and there was a severe lack of experienced officers and NCOs. In short, the countless irreplaceable veterans now lying beneath Russian soil. There was also a critical shortage of cavalry, a crisis mocked by British <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute to realise the photo. <laughs> hey, we were just throwing shots. We did not give a shit. Oh, that's... Strut, <laughs> look big and make your hobbies proud. <laughs> we'll make them believe there's a cavalry in France. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh... It would take Napoleon longer to replace the many thousands and of horses who perished in Russia. When oh. Napoleon left Paris That's for Germany funny, in mid-April, the French situation was precarious. Okay. Eugène had been forced back behind the river Elbe to the fortified city of Magdeburg. Ooh. Dresden, the capital of Saxony, had fallen to the Prussians. The Duchy of mecklenburg schwerin became the first German state to defect from Napoleon's Confederation okay. of the Rhine. Mm. Russian Cossacks raided as far as Hamburg, inspiring local revolts against French occupying forces. 
Meanwhile, Austria stood on the sidelines, so far declining to back either side. Okay. Napoleon's miraculous feat of organisation meant he now had more than 200,000 troops in Germany. And the Emperor's personal magnetism was undimmed. The morale of his army was high. The Russians, on the other hand, lost their iconic commander, Field Marshal Kutuzov, to pneumonia on the 28th of April. His role was taken over by General Wittgenstein. Russian troops were exhausted and far from home. Their army weakened by the need to contain French garrisons across Poland and it Germany. It feels like they're just doing what the French done. They've gone into Russia, now they're going to France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, well, it's a counter-attack, isn't it? Yeah, it's a counter-attack, but the men's morale must be like, yeah, mate, this is just long. We've got them out of the homeland. It's, um, I, I personally... I don't know. I'd understand. I understand it, but it's, so, it's so just... at this point, you've got to think like to them: if they defeat Napoleon now, then his empire crumbles and it goes up for grabs, and it's now just a, bro a bunch of broken yeah. things. So, like it, everyone, then uh, then what happens is everyone then starts consolidating to power, so you don't have to worry because it's all going to be broken up, so that you can then basically strengthen your forces to then maybe come back yeah. later. So yeah, I don't know, but yeah, as as a as a normal soldier, your morale would go. Yeah. Um, but then again, it depends on what you're being told you're fighting for. Like, like propaganda was a thing then. Yeah, propaganda was a large thing. You know, if they like like if they're if they're being told that Napoleon's got another million troops in France or something along them lines, I mean something outlandish yeah. that that he's preparing to come back, but we need to to beat him in his homeland first. Yeah, you know? yeah. Whatever they're getting told in to believe, you know. It's, it's so long though, man. It is, it is. Prussia and Sweden had yet to fully mobilise their strength, and Allied forces barely mustered 100,000 men. They were now heavily outnumbered by Napoleon, and the French Emperor decided to strike quickly. He ordered Marshal Davou to Hamburg with 35,000 men to secure his northern flank. He would march against the Russian and Prussian forces converging on Leipzig to force a decisive battle. Victory would make Austria think twice about joining the Allies, allow him to rescue the 90,000 men trapped in garrisons across Germany and Poland, and re-establish his dominance over Europe. Can he do it? That's the question. I don't know. Yeah. If the art of war was only the art of not taking risks, glory would belong to medicrites. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. Metacritics or, yeah. Yeah, metacritics. Metacritics. Uh, we need a full triumph. Napoleon to his marshals, June 1813. Understandably, why I'm single. <laughs> As Napoleon advanced on Leipzig, the Allies faced a predicament. To risk battle against Napoleon's larger army, or give up Germany without a fight, a potentially devastating blow to Allied morale and any chance of winning Austria over to their cause. Allied headquarters made the bold decision to attack. They knew most of Napoleon's army was made up of raw conscripts, that their own troops were better trained and had a great superiority in cavalry and artillery. I'm sorry. The Allies agreed that as... It's just an easy choice, right? No, there's an artwork that I just saw. What's going on in the bottom left in that? What is going on there? I want to try, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> is this one of the soldiers' wives? Like, were you allowed to bring all your wife and kids with you on battle or something? It must have been, but there was two blokes there. I s why would you one's bring your... One's on the floor and one say... No, yeah. there's two blokes there, by the way. That's what I said, there's yeah. one, two blokes there, one's on the floor, one's standing up behind her. Like, I'm no. not too sure. It's that one there as well. That's a child. So he's got to be his family then? How young were they fighting on the battlefield then? 
I know we said teens, but how young were they actually on the battlefield? Like, that's insane. It is insane. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. That is just, it is insane. The Allies agreed that as Napoleon crossed the Sarla River, they would hit his right flank okay. before he could concentrate the full mass of his forces. The two armies were on a collision course, <clears throat> but Napoleon's shortage of cavalry meant he lacked information about Allied movements. Oh. On the 1st of May, Marshal Bessières, commanding the cavalry in Murat's absence, was carrying out reconnaissance himself when he was hit by a cannonball and killed instantly. Oh. Bessières was the second of Napoleon's marshals to be killed in action, oh. and like Lan, an old comrade and trusted friend. The Allies were able to surprise Napoleon, falling on Marshal Ney's Third Corps near Lutzen. Ney's troops had to cling on in the face of a Russian and Prussian onslaught, while Napoleon rapidly redirected his other corps to fall on the enemy's flanks. At one stage, Napoleon had to personally help rally routing mm. troops as they broke in the face of determined Prussian assaults. But on the whole, his young conscripts fought with courage. Mm. And despite hours of savage fighting, Wittgenstein could not exploit his early advantage. As French reinforcements arrived, the battle turned against him. Towards dusk, the Allies were forced to break off the engagement. Though they'd inflicted around 22,000 casualties, Jesus. losing just half as many men. Wow, is that it? General von Scharnhorst, mortally wounded, was among them. <sighs> Crucially, Napoleon's lack of cavalry the morale, meant he the was young unable to pursue is, the enemy. Yeah, 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 very yeah. Treated in good order. Very good. Expecting the Prussians but to again, fall back on them. In this Berlin. scenario, you've got the Frenchmen the ones defending their home. Yeah. You know, it's the, the reverse of... And the fact Napoleon's the, literally at the front yeah, with them, yeah, yeah, rallying yeah. them up. Yeah. yeah. But again, Napoleon's up there at the front because it's his empire. Yeah. You know, it, uh, things are changed when you're defending your land. Yeah, yeah. You know? To fall back on Berlin, Napoleon Fancy sent Marshal Ney in pursuit defending our land. and continued east. <laughs> But the lie. Allied army stayed together, <laughs> withdrawing to a defensive position at Bautzen, deliberately close to the Austrian border, hoping to entice Schwarzenberg to intervene, and daring Napoleon to violate Austrian neutrality. No. Neither happened. Instead, Napoleon ordered Ney to swing south, to fall on the Allies' northern flank, while he launched a frontal assault to pin them in place. The battle lasted two days, as French infantry struggled forward against the Prussian and Russian lines. But a misunderstanding over Ney's orders caused a delay that allowed the Allies to narrowly escape Napoleon's trap. Once more, the Allies fought with great determination and inflicted many more losses than they suffered. 25,000. There were more casualties now. during the pursuit, including the next day, General Duroc, Grand Marshal of the Palace, responsible for Napoleon's personal arrangements, and his closest surviving friend. Riding with Napoleon's staff, a freak cannon shot ricocheted off a tree and disemboweled him. Oh. His slow, painful death deeply upset oh, Napoleon. Death, it weren't even an instant death. The Emperor continued his pursuit oh. to Breslau, once again hindered by his lack of experienced cavalry, while Oudinot was sent north to take Berlin, but was held at Luckau by von Bülow's Prussian corps. On the 2nd of June, with both sides strained to breaking point, neutral Austria proposed a ceasefire, which, to the surprise of many, Napoleon accepted. Hmm. My eagles 
are yeah my eagles are again victorious but my star is setting Napoleon to General Calacancourt 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 I think yeah Calancourt yeah Calancourt I'm terrible Calancourt Saxony 2nd of May 1813 He really knows the armistice well of Blessis would yeah. last more than two months. A period of intense diplomacy and military mobilization oh, by both well. sides. Oh, Napoleon wanted time to rebuild his cavalry, a shortage of which had allowed the Allies to escape twice. Mm. But he also wanted to keep Austria on side, which he feared might join the Allies with 200,000 troops even though Emperor Francis I was now his father-in-law, since Napoleon's marriage to his daughter, Marie-Louise, in 1810. Mm. Austrian Foreign Minister Clemens von Metternich, who'd become one of 19th century Europe's most influential statesmen, now took centre stage. Metternich wanted peace and to see Austria restored as a great European power. Okay. Which meant Napoleon contained, but not crushed, which would hand too much power to Russia. In June, he travelled to Dresden to ask Napoleon to make concessions, while promising the Allies that if he did not, Austria would join them. Mm. But Napoleon dismissed Metternich's terms out of hand. He would not return the Illyrian provinces to Austria, agree to the repartition of Poland, or the breakup of the Confederation of the Rhine. All were out of the question. Napoleon famously threw his hat to the ground in fury. Peace and war lie in your mind. Do you think that was a mistake? Do you think you should have gave bits back? I don't know. Uh, <sighs> I definitely think that I, I would have thought about it strategically. Uh, yeah. And I, I thought, think, okay, I might have to just give you some of this land back to come back later and reconquer uh, it. With a ceasefire in hand, I yeah. think he should have given it a few more days to yeah, go exactly. over with a few of his... Uh, yeah. Whoever's Sometimes left alive, really. Do you know what I mean? You've got to concede to win another day. Yeah. Um, but he's just all, all out. I want this empire. Yeah. He sees it crumbling and he's desperate now. You can see he's starting to, to get desperate. Yeah. I in your majesty's hands, Metternich is said to have warned him. Today you can still make peace. Mm. Tomorrow it may be too late. There you go. But Napoleon preferred war to what he called a humiliating peace. Mm. It's too egotistical. Expect a defeat whenever the Emperor attacks in person. Attack and defeat his lieutenants whenever you can. General Maru to Emperor Alexander. Cilicia, July 1813. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get 12th there. 12th of August 1813. Austria joined the Sixth Coalition. Yeah and declared war on France. Oh dear. The Allies now had a numerical advantage of three to two. And a new strategy, the Trachenberg Ooh. Plan. Recognising Napoleon's genius, the Allies would avoid battle the with the Emperor and instead target his marshals, threaten his flanks and wear down French forces mm. until it was time oh, to close in marshals. for the kill. Oh no. Over the next few months, the coalition would also receive massive material support from Britain, including £8 million in silver and gold coin, 200 cannon with transport, 120,000 firearms, 18 million rounds of ammunition, 23,000 barrels of gunpowder, 30,000 swords and sabres, 150,000 uniforms, 175,000 pairs of boots, 1.5 million pounds of beef, biscuit and flour, and 28,000 gallons of rum and brandy. 
the total value of British aid to the coalition in 1813 was £11.3 million. Pounds. Today, what? worth around half a billion dollars. Napoleon. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't think. We don't do that for our own people. Oh, I, I think we d we used to do it a lot. We don't do it for, for our own people. <laughs> but I still think we chuck a load of money into our military. 30,000 gallons of rum! I know, I know. The rum's jokes, the rum and whiskey's jokes. It's so funny. <laughs> I, I do wonder though, how oh. much how much have we given to the oh. Ukraine in this war? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big number, isn't it? That's a very big yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. So we just looked it up on our phone. Like this is a lot, but at the <laughs> moment, the UK military, uh, to what I can find, has sent an additional of one point five billion worth of like stuff as well. So not just money, but like, <coughs> yeah, to, in, in total, and that's to Ukraine. 1. 5. That's to Ukraine. Yeah. Right now. Uh, do you want to know how much we paid in the Napoleonic Wars? Oh, how many in total? One point six five billion. Oh, okay, and in this one particular, it was just one point five. Then, I oh, know it was just uh, uh, under half a half a billion. Yeah, but this, this was, was eleven point three million. That 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 was eleven point three million in today's money. It's half a no, billion. No, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, half a billion. Yeah, eleven point three million at the time. At the time, yeah. That and what we gave them. Yeah, that's insane. It's, insane. it's, it's crazy. Insane. Napoleon, oh, meanwhile, had run. turned Dresden yeah, into yeah, a yeah. major supply depot and strengthened his cavalry arm, though it remained a pale shadow of its glorious past. Murat returned to lead it, his secret approach to the Allies having been rebuffed. Mm. But when news arrived of King Joseph's disastrous defeat to Wellington's Anglo-Spanish-Portuguese army at the Battle of Vitoria, Napoleon had to send Marshal Soult one of his best commanders, to salvage the situation. Oh, no. On the 15th of August, Napoleon left Dresden and advanced against what he considered the most urgent threat, the joint Prussian-Russian army of Silesia, commanded by General Gebhard von Blücher, soon to win the nickname Marshal Vorwärts. Marshal forwards for his aggressive leadership. <laughs> but Blücher followed the new plan and retreated when he learned of Napoleon's advance. Napoleon then received news from Marshal Sincere, holding Dresden with 20,000 men, that Schwarzenberg's gigantic army of Bohemia was approaching, and the city and its supplies were in danger. <laughs> Okay. Napoleon left Marshal Macdonald to keep an eye on Blücher and raced back no, to Dresden, not good for it, sending it? Van Damme's 1st Corps to threaten Schwarzenberg's communications. He's just going to be right back and forward, did he? Mm -hmm. By the time the Allied assault began, enough reinforcements had arrived to fight off the attack. OK. So it's got the next day, despite being heavily outnumbered, Napoleon ordered a counterattack. Struggling through mud and heavy rain, Marshal Murat's advance, supported by Victor's second corps, broke the Allied left flank okay. and took 13,000 prisoners. Mm. The Allies had suffered a disastrous defeat yeah. because they'd ignored their own rule. Don't take Ten on Napoleon in battle. Cartridges. To 38 allies. But news wow. soon arrived that turned the situation on its head. Oh. Marshal Oudinot had resumed his advance on Berlin with 66,000 men. But in three days of heavy combat around Grossbiren, he was defeated by Bernadotte's Army of the North. Mm. Some of the most savage fighting was between Napoleon's Saxon allies and von Bülow's Prussians, oh, two wow. German states that for now remained on opposing sides. Oh, wow. Yeah. Three days later, at the Katzbach River, Blücher inflicted a crushing defeat on Marshal Macdonald, driving some French troops into the river itself. 
MacDonald lost 30,000 men, three eagles and 100 guns, need. for Blücher's 22,000 oh. casualties. The difference there is... Three bad. days after mm. Napoleon's victory at Dresden, as Van Damme's corps pursued the Allies, it became trapped in wooded valleys around Kulm and was overrun. General Van Damme himself was dragged from his horse by Cossacks, as he and 10,000 of his men were made prisoner. Napoleon sent Ney to take over from Udino, who engaged Bülow's Prussian corps at Denewitz. The Prussians, fighting to save Berlin, held their own, until Russian and Swedish reinforcements arrived to turn the battle decisively in the Allies' favour. Ney's retreat became a rout, with the loss of another 22,000 men. Oh, really? They can do Napoleon's it. brilliant victory at Dresden had been completely overturned in just 10 days. Wow. The Allied plan was working. Napoleon became increasingly frustrated so they've got one as Allied generals. armies withdrew mm. wherever he advanced, and advanced wherever he was not. His teenage conscripts were exhausted by constant marching, mm. and famished as Saxony had been stripped bare of supplies. Thousands fell sick, thousands more deserted. And there's the problem with young conscripts. Desertion. I don't want to do it any longer than they have to. No, no. Oh, and, and, and if people are leaving on a daily basis, you're just another one. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Oh. This isn't going well. And back then, you could change your name and you could just go anywhere. You could just disappear. You know, see, you just start on life as a new person and yeah. like, no one ever knew you deserted, you know? Most of the people that you were with were probably dead. Yeah, now I'd recognise you or know anything about you. Yeah. were now operating behind Napoleon's army, harassing his communications with France. Many of Napoleon's marshals advised him to pull back to the River Rhine. Yeah. But yeah. Napoleon wasn't giving up Germany without a fight. There will be, there will inevitably be a great battle at Leipzig. Napoleon to Marshal Ney, 13th of October, 1813. Oh, Marshal Ney, man, please don't. By October don't 1813, Napoleon faced a third of a million Allied troops in Germany, converging on him from three directions. 900 miles away, Field Marshal Wellington was crossing the Bidassoa River into France, the first enemy army on French soil in nearly 20 years. Ooh, wow. While the Kingdom of Bavaria, a French ally since the days of Austerlitz, had secretly agreed to switch sides and would declare war on France on the 14th of October. Mm, that's not looking good. No, it's not looking good. Napoleon planned to defend the line of the River Elbe. But the arrival of General Bennigsen's reserve Russian army freed up Blücher, who suddenly marched to join forces with Bernadotte and forced his way across the Elbe at Wartenberg. Yeah, that looks like an insert. Napoleon really went north with yeah. 150,000 men, seeking a decisive battle that would change his fortunes. But once more, Blücher narrowly escaped him. A then came him. news from Murat, who'd been left with 67,000 men. They said they said don't attack Napoleon. Yeah. Napoleon is too strategic. Strategic. Yeah, what is up with me today? 7,000 men to cover Schwarzenberg. The enemy had bypassed Dresden and was heading for Leipzig. If the city fell, Napoleon would be cut off from France. Once more, he was advised to fall back to the Rhine. But instead, Napoleon ordered all his forces to concentrate at Leipzig. You're an idiot. He would risk everything in one great battle he's, to decide he's the fate of his empire. For a battle and to change the fate everything. Of Europe. This is this is not the one though. 
This is not it's the battle. Really oh. Stop doing that! Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to finding out what happens in the next episode. God! <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we will catch you in the next video. In a bit, guys.